Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and I am joined by a very special guest today, somebody you guys have heard me talk a little bit about on the show in previous episodes, because uh, you've heard me reference her book. That is Kiki Dombrowski. I hope I said that correctly, because I butcher everybody's names. And she is the author of Unusual, I'm sorry, A Curious Future, The Handbook of Unusual Divination and Ocular Techniques. That is definitely a long title and I butcher it every time, but it's a wonderful book. And Kiki, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk with you. I am too. We have been talking about you, you coming on the show for a couple of weeks now, and I'm mm -hmm. so excited you're finally here. And it's Friday the 13th when we're recording this, so for those of you who don't like Friday the 13th, this is the lucky chance that we actually got to record. So yay! Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. I think Friday the 13th is a fun day. <laughs> I do too. I love it. So Kiki, welcome to the show. And to start you off, this is actually going to be the start of a divination series that we're going to be doing on the show, which I thought was perfect to have you here because I kind of feel like you're the queen of divination with your book. Your book oh. was so incredible. There's so much information uh, we were talking about prior to recording here about how much there is to try to unpack just to break it down in some very simple forms. And I have to say, I don't know if I actually could break it down simplistically, but it's so good. There's so much information that's so good in it. That is so nice to say. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad that you enjoyed the book. And and um, yes, there is a lot of information in it. I, I, I've been calling it a gateway to divination. So the book is meant to be an inviting experience for the reader to explore a variety of ways to work with a huge range of divination techniques. I would say that that is a very accurate description. Uh, for me, I probably reference this at least every day to every other day, but because I'm learning a whole lot of new stuff out of it and playing with a whole lot of new divination tactics. So it, it's fun for me to go, okay, what was that? What did I, what was I referencing? What was this? And slip to that section. So it's been a lot of fun. And I would say that it's now one of the number one books I recommend as well. It's, a, it's in my top 10 for sure. Oh, my, thank you. That's so cool. That's so cool. I'm so happy that you're finding new things to try out too. I sometimes open, like you can even do bibliomancy. So the divination of, you know, working with books with a curious future where you just open it up and go, okay, today I'm going to work with this form of divination and open it to a random page and and see what what the book suggests you work with for the day. That's awesome. I haven't tried that, but it's now on my to-do list. I will I know. be definitely doing that. So <laughs> I have to ask, what got you started in the world of divination? Oh, what got me started? Well, I'm very fortunate in that I discovered divination and magic and witchcraft at a fairly young age. Um, I was in middle school when I started to, you know, discover, you know, maybe like alternative music and um, my, you know, start to find out different aspects of my identity. And <laughs> I loved the show, My So-Called Life. It was like my totally favorite show. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade. I can't, maybe even going into high school. Um, I was 13 and there was an episode where um, uh, the lead actress <laughs> had a deck of tarot cards and I just thought they were the coolest things ever. And fortunately, my, you know, I said to my mom, I really want a deck of tarot cards. Can I have a deck of tarot cards? And she was willing to, you know, let me work with them. And so we went to this really cool new age store in my hometown of Glastonbury, Connecticut. And um, the people there were, I, I you know, I'm still th so thankful to them for this, you know, to this day, because um, they really, you know, they helped me find a deck and they said, you should pick out a deck you're drawn to, believe it or not, it was the Rider Waite Smith. And I went home with my Rider Waite Smith and a couple books and I was on my way. That was, was pretty much the gateway for me was tarot. Um, and then I stepped into runes um, in college because I was studying um, Celtic and Norse mythology. And so all of a sudden I got really obsessed with runes. Um, 
and and then from there all of a sudden I was like wait there, there's all different systems people do all sorts of cool stuff mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden I was diving into the world of working with pendulums and um using different systems of, of or kits to throw things like crystals and um it, it, it's just it truly is like for me it, it just became a rabbit hole it was just <laughs> and a, a lovely one at that too because I just um yeah, I find that there's just so many fascinating techniques. And I think that it, it it also felt special too, because some days you just don't feel like doing tarot or doing runes. And to know that there are opportunities to um, connect with, with sort of this like spiritual or magical or otherworldly wisdom, you could do this in, in all different methods. And, um, you know, the world is your oyster with, with divination. I, I always joke and say that you could, you could find a way to divine with anything. <laughs> could be a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Which I, I have a question about that, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, so I have to say that, yes, divination is a wonderful windy rabbit hole that has lots of little nooks and crannies and you can do anything you want with it. It's so much fun, especially now that I have your book and I'm learning all sorts of new things. It's a never ending rabbit hole for me, <laughs> which is wonderful. And I love it every minute of it because I, I've actually just started with the dice divination chapter and, uh, started playing with dice, but I'm using D20s and oh, some of the so cool. <laughs> some of the wonderful things about that, like I was using the one through eighteen. Uh, I believe it's out of the Buckland book of Gypsy Witchcraft or Gypsy Magic. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was using those, and then I was like, okay, well, nineteen and twenty, I will come up with something else. And then as I was kind of playing with it, I was like, I don't really agree with some of these, so I'm gonna write new ones, and I'm gonna change it up yeah. and make my own yeah. system. Yes, that's so perfect. Oh my God. I feel like like we must have connected somewhere because I remember even in my book, I referenced, um, you know, Raymond Buckland's book. And I said, you know, these are, these are some of the things that he suggested as interpretations for the 18, but I'm also going to include how I view these numbers. When I roll this number, this is what it represents to me. And I encourage you and anybody to to make that system your own. I'm giving you a recipe, but you can add whatever spices you want and you can make it gluten-free if you want, or you could just, you know, like you could add honey. I don't care. You know, like if it's what, if that's the the taste you're going for, then do it. And I'm so excited to hear that you're doing that with the, with the, the D20, is it D20? D20, yeah. Yes. It's so cool. You'll have to tell me how, how it goes for you. As soon as I get all of the kinks worked out in the system, I will send you a copy of my system and, I will let you know how it works so you might adapt it to your kit. So that will be fun. <laughs> yes. I'm so thrilled. That's wonderful. So I took your divination class a few weeks ago, which was phenomenal. And in your divination class, you actually spoke of having a divination kit. What all do you keep in yours? And do you have more than one kit? Do you have like a travel kit, like an everyday one, all of the above? Etc. <laughs> I, I I think all of the above is the best. Um, I'm actually it's so it's kind of funny. I'm very quietly wheeling over. I have a shelf of divination, <laughs> and I'm kind of like looking at the trays. Um, so I have a crystal kit um, of crystals that I've collected that all represent different things. Um, I have dice as well. Um, I have a shell kit. Um, which I actually feel is very autobiographical in the book. Like I'm really obsessed with the beach and beach combing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to go to the beach and learn about shells and make a deck or make a kit. And so I did that, but that really doesn't go with me because it's a little bit fragile. So it's just something I have at home. Mm -hmm. I have pendulums. I have dowsing rods. Goodness gracious. I have a lot here. Um, I also have a bone and trinket kit. Um, and it's funny because now I really should just call it a trinket and bone kit <laughs> because there's more trinkets in it than I think little pieces of bone. Um, all the bones that I do have were ethically sourced. Um, some I discovered, you know, like either camping or in the woods. Um, but everything in the kit is so precious to me because there's actually um, items in there that, you know, I received from my father or even things that were handed down to me from my grandparents. Um so, uh, you know, my dad lived in Italy for a long time and I have this little coin 
was it lira i hope i said that right before they went to the euro they had the lira mm -hmm. so it's like old lira and it has like a, a dolphin on it and so like you know I, I there's something about that kit that i'm just so in love with because every item is so precious and it holds all of these memories and that and that feels really powerful to me and um it, it's also a reason i i don't know i guess what i mean to say is is when people are ready to start developing or building their own trinket kits, they're going to find that it becomes a, a story about who they are and where they've been and what they see in the natural world or even in the world of humanity as, as, as magical and precious. Um, and so that's a very powerful kit to me. A lot, a lot of little trinkets from my travels around the world. That is absolutely beautiful. I, I don't do a whole lot of traveling anymore, but you know, I, I thought about making one of those kits and I have so many beads and like little, like, oh, um, uh, charms and stuff from all over the place. Cause I used to actually own a jewelry making business years Ooh. ago, years ago. And I still have all these beads and some of those beads I actually got from when I lived in New Mexico and all that. So Ooh. It's one of those things where I was like, I could just make one of these. I have most of the pieces to make it. I should just do it. And I haven't done it yet, but it's on my to-do list to do it. So uh, I've been working through making my crystal kit, my crystal divination kit, um, because that one, like as soon as I saw that in, their, in the book, when I flipped through it the first time, I was like, what is this? I've never heard yeah. of this. And I, Isn't it I immediately read the chapter. And I was like, I have oh. to make one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and I, I, I divided that in particular to two different types. There's like that very traditional one where you have the stones that are almost like assigned to represent different astrological bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I mean, again, it's like, this is a recipe. Let's, you know, add the spices and and whatever substitutions you need to make it your own. And so I share my own you know, set as well. And, 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 and you could do the same with yours and, and, oh, wow. To have like cool, like crystals that, that are meaningful to you and that you're drawn to can, can really, oh God, I love crystals. And so like even holding them can be very relaxing for me. And, um, I'm just one of those crystal people. <laughs> so that's a really fun one too. It's a really fun kit to work with. And, um, you know, I, it, it, it could be fun too, in that you can make a simple crystal divination kit with just a few stones. Mm -hmm. And every day you just pull one out of, of a bag and, and see what it is and see what it represents. And you may know what the theme of the day is, or, um, you know, or you can make a really intricate one where you have like, <laughs> I think I talk about Scott Cunningham's 50 stone bowl, where he would like, and I hope I have this correct. I should probably open up to the chapter. I don't have it memorized. But um, he suggested that you have a um, bowl of crystals. And anytime you have a question, you can like kind of put your hands over the stones. And it feels really good to touch all those crystals like in, in, in the crystal bowl. And um, think about your question. And if I remember correctly, if you pull an even number, your answer is no. So if you pull an even number of crystals, it's no, but if you pull an odd number, it's a yes. So th there's so many different ways to be playful with, with crystals in divination. I, I totally agree with that. And it's funny because when I looked at um, your section, I actually have the book open as we're speaking about this. Uh, Kiki's lithomancy crystal set. Lithomancy is the, the actual study and practice of using crystals. Is I believe that's the correct definition. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's like, um, well, let's look at, it's like, it, it's, it's the divination of precious gems and, yes. and crystals. Yeah. Yes. And I love, you know, looking through and seeing all of your different stones and all this. And I was like, hmm, some of these stones, I don't know if I could actually find them, like without actually going through like a stone retailer. But at the same time, I'm just like, you could just, you know, substitute a different stone. That means more. Totally. To and I'm absolutely like, oh, yes that's great so I'm, I'm slowly working on building it because some of the stones i want to get i have to source through wonderful ethical people and all that so but yes. it's been so much fun playing with it and i love it so much i absolutely yeah. love it 
and you, you raise a really good point too. You know, there are some people that that prefer, you know, I also, there's, there's a, oh my God, I wish I remember the name of them. There's a shop in Toronto that does ethically sourced uh, crystals and they're really good. Um, but if people are not interested in using, you know, crystal, you know, crystals in the sense that maybe we visualize where you have a piece of amethyst and a piece of citrine and you really don't know where, you know, it came from and you rather just work with stones. I mean, like, there's no harm in going out into, you know, your into the woods in your backyard or into, you know, into the brook, um, you know, in a park nearby and seeing if there are pieces that that stand out to you um, that you wish to collect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Substitute. I, as we're sitting here talking about this, something that just popped in my head, my daughter loves to paint rocks. And so oh. I, it literally just popped in my brain and it's thinking, well, if you can't find all of the stones that are mentioned in the book, get like just a basic river rock set from like the Dollar Tree and get some paints and paint them and make them a set. I love it. I love, I it. love it. That is <laughs> such a great idea. And maybe one of the benefits of that kind of kit is that all of the stones are probably going to be very similar in shape and size. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, that, that could, some people like kits to be very uniform where everything's kind of similar. So you could just like grab your hand into a bag and can't decipher like, oh, I know what that is. That's the, that's the tumbled, you know, <laughs> carnelian or that's the, that's the crystal quartz point. Like, like to just go in and just know that they all feel, have this similar feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's really good. And, and, and then, I mean, like truly you could paint whatever you want on them. That's true. You, you know, you, <laughs> you could paint all could. of that. And, and you could bring in that astrology again too and do, you know, the sun sign and, and, and the Venus sign and the oh, Mars and yeah. all of those, you could use those. It, it just kind of like when, when we think of like working with runes where a lot of people will carve the runes or paint the runes onto something natural. If you wanted to do that, you could do that with, with, um, with, uh, yeah, with like the astrological signs. That is fun. so brilliant. And I love it. I, I might have to make one of those sets too. I am a like massive collector of divination stuff. I Ooh. I love tarot decks. I love oracle decks. I collect them. Um, in addition to using them and playing with them, I think I have thirty seven in total. I have a lot. Yeah, uh, that's fun. <laughs> they they're so gorgeous and they're addictive to buy. So be careful if you buy them, everyone. So <laughs> yeah. And, and they're becoming much easier to find yes. now too, right? Like you could get them at, somebody told me they got the, um, the modern witch tarot deck at Whole Foods. <laughs> I and I had a couple off of Wish, surprisingly. Like, right. And they were beautiful decks. Obviously they don't come with the books. Like, so if you're going to, if you feel comfortable buying the decks from Wish, do know one thing. They are pirated. They're not actually, the authors are not getting any money from them. So that was one of the reasons why I stopped buying them. But if you do end up doing that because it's affordable for you, I do understand the affordability of that. But do you realize the books are not coming with them? So buy traditional tarot and just buy a basic tarot book because that'll be the easiest way to do that if you guys choose to do that. But preferably buy from your tarot authors because they're going to get the money, whereas Wish won't give them any money. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. I, you know, they have them at TJ Maxx too. You could go to yeah. home goods and find them in the station. They stick them in the stationary section, which is like near the candles. Not that I go to home goods all the time. Clearly <laughs> I do. That's also a very weird place to put them, but okay. <laughs> I know. Like I found this star seed Oracle deck, um, at TJ Maxx. And I was like, wow, these are amazing. And actually they turned out to be, they're one of my favorites. And I ended up finding the artist and I went directly to her and, and, and got a tarot deck because not only did she design the star seed Oracle, she also designed a couple tarot decks and they're, they're, they're just so beautiful. They're like in these like beautiful pastel tones. Ugh, they're just, it, it's so pretty. I think I recommended it in the back of the book. Mm -hmm. I think it's called the star child, a star child tarot. I want to say, I wish I, I wish I had a better memory. Star you could, child. you could tell talking to me that I'm like, wait, what was that? Um, Star Child yeah, Tarot. Star Child, That's yes. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's such a gorgeous deck. There are so, so many gorgeous decks. And then, mm -hmm. you know, of course, uh, I work with Llewellyn and their 
I'm one of their reviewers. And so they're just like, here's, you know, 50 new tarot decks that are coming out. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't have space, Llewellyn. Please, no, please, yes. no, don't make any more. And then, of course, <laughs> I request all of them. So because oh. I love them all. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, but I, moving on a little bit, uh, obviously your book contains so many aspects of divination. If you had met somebody who basically said, I don't know where to start, where would you recommend? I don't know where to start. Where do you recommend starting? Hmm. That is, you know what? I have never thought. I guess that I would give them a book like A Curious Future in that I would recommend reading about a variety of different techniques. Mm -hmm. But not only that, I think it's really important to also do some work to uh, maybe uncover your psychic abilities a little bit, maybe connect with your intuition a little bit. Um, maybe think about some of the things that you're intrigued by. So maybe one of the questions that you want to say, you know, if somebody said, I don't know where to start, I'd say, well, what, why do you want to learn divination in the first place? Um, you know, oh, well, I heard about it in a song. Okay, cool. What, what type of divination was in the song? Okay, let's go find that divination in the book. You know, like, <laughs> you know I was like, like crystals. Okay, good. We know where to start. You know, it's, it's almost like, it, maybe my first step would go like, think about what it is that draws you to divination. So for example, just using my own backstory to go back to, to where we started, when we started talking, you know, I watched a TV show, tarot was in it. I thought tarot was really pretty. I wanted to learn. And that's how I started. I, I asked for help. So maybe that's the other thing too, is to just say, you know, what is it that, um, why is it that you want to do this? Is there a certain type of divination that you're drawn to? And who can you ask to, who can you ask uh, for support uh, and resources? And, and the blessing of being in 2021 is that there are so many opportunities to get some really beneficial support and help and information out there. Um, you know, it, it's a tough time to just go in and out of shops, but if you are able, I always recommend going to a local uh, metaphysical store or which witchy witchcraft store and just having a conversation with whoever is working there and saying, you know, I'm really ready to start learning. Um, but I always do recommend to you, you know, maybe a, a helpful overview book on divination would be helpful too. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think the other thing I was mentioning earlier too, is another thing you can also consider starting with is, um, what does it mean to be psychic? I don't think that you need to necessarily be psychic or have that sort of like sixth sight, third eye, wide open kind of vibe to be successful with divination. But it sure does help if you feel like you have either intuitive hits or you're getting sort of like these psychic feelings. So maybe uncovering what type of psychic abilities you have or how you receive psychic information, that could be a great place to start as well. Um, and one of the easiest things that, that you can do to start with that is to just maybe take time every day to meditate, um, you know, to, to, to do magic or prayer, however that, you know, works in your personal practice. Just thinking of different ways to, you know, think about also too, how did you start learning anything else? You know, <laughs> you got instruction. So, so, so reaching out and asking for help, that's, that's such a powerful thing too. take courses, look for people that you think might have more resources. I am, I have so much courage now. I don't know what happened, but anytime I have a question or a knowledge gap, I just go straight to the source. And I'm like, what do I need? Like, like, um, I was, I was talking to somebody a few days ago because um, I'm working on tarot and, and doing a lot with tarot. And I realized that, you know, I have some, some knowledge gaps. So I just went right to somebody who's, um, you know, a really well-respected tarot reader. And I said, I need help. I need your recommendations. And you'll find that when you ask for recommendations um, and, and ask for help from teachers, they're going to be so fired up about giving you help and getting you on the path that you need to go to, you know, become a mature reader. Yes, absolutely. 
And, you know, as you guys have probably heard me talk about on the show, I recommend a lot of books from a lot of different sources and a lot of different people who are all wonderful teachers. And they have so much great information to pass down. And Kiki is now on that list as well. So if you have any questions about divination, reach out. She's on Twitter. Check her out. <laughs> yes, please. Please. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm always happy to help people out. And um, you're a wonderful resource, too, because you're also helping people to get where they need to go to and, and, and sharing knowledge and wisdom with them. And oh. and, and and that's an awesome, <laughs> awesome thing. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love yeah. that so much. <laughs> so we I know so many wonderful tarot readers who and divination divinists, I suppose, is the appropriate terminology uh, who use mundane things for divination. Do you have something that is an orthodox or mundane that you use for divination? And if so, what is your favorite way to do that? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you one. I think it's more unorthodox. It's a little bit silly. Um, the the name I gave it is now a little bit out of date. Um, but I call it iPodomancy. Um, <laughs> and I know we don't have iPods anymore. We have you know streaming musical services, but. The idea of <laughs> ipotomancy is that um, you go and, and, and you hold your phone or you hold your musical, whatever, electronic device that you're playing music out of. I don't, I don't know. I use a phone mm -hmm. um, and I use Spotify. And I just go to all of my favorite liked songs or like a favorite playlist. Um, or you may even want to create a playlist where you're like, this is my divination playlist. And I hold the phone. And I, I will say, you know, maybe say a prayer, maybe clear my mind and just kind of tell myself within the next song, I'm going to receive a, a, a message I need for whatever question or intention that I have in my mind. And I see that it, I wonder if that if that will sometimes sync up. It's really kind of funny. I, I, I think that that there can be a lot of, of power and wisdom embedded in, in, in the lyrics mm -hmm. of our favorite songs. And so I just. I really enjoy Ipotomancy, although it's really eerie if you work with Tom Waits. <laughs> so be mindful of the music, you know, like if you're just like, I want to know if I'm going to have a happy day. And all of a sudden, like you get like, you know, <laughs> a Tom Waits or <laughs> something kind of gloomy on your, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a kind of. I don't know if that if that's if that's a good example, no, but that's a but great that's one example. that I, it's really playful. It's really silly. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's really fun when like Britney Spears pops up and you're like, Oh, I'm going to have a really fun day. <laughs> you know, so, so, you, you know, um, I recommend it. It's, it, you know, I, I don't know what you, if you would call it Ipotomancy anymore. Spotify. Spot Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> Mancy? Yeah, I Spotify, Spotify. I, I don't know. Uh, terminology needs work, but I guess, uh, I, I maybe shuffle Mancy maybe. I think I, I've heard it referred to that as before shuffle mancy. So uh, that'll be, that's a very fun way to do it as well to just put a playlist on shuffle and say the next three songs will have, you know, my message in them. And I love that. Yeah. It does work. Like the, there'll be days where I'll, I'll just go for a walk and I'll put my headphones in and I'll just put a playlist on. And I'm like, okay, I need some wisdom. I need something. Just download it in my brain. And then like, there's moments of the song that just really pop in your ears and you're just like, oh, well, yeah, that, that was Less prominent and feels pointed. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> I love it so yep. much. Uh, well, I have one, well, actually two last questions for you. Sure. Do you have of any fun upcoming projects that you can spill the beans a little bit about? Absolutely. Yes, I do. So, um, I am really excited. There's a couple of things I'm super, super excited about. One is um, an in-person, like a like a, a teaching. I actually have a few teaching things that are happening right now. I'm doing divination courses uh, through the Boston Public Library, and it's monthly courses. It's so it's like we meet once a month, and it's for young adults and college age. Um, people. And, um, you could sign up through the Boston public library. Um, that's really exciting. And every single month we meet and talk about a different type of divination. And I think, I think in, I think that this month in August, we're doing, uh, cards 
Uh, so we're doing cartomancy. So we'll we'll talk about tarot and, and oracle and Lenor Lenormand, which is probably the weakest link for me, but I know a little bit. Um, obviously, I've heard about it, but also I leaned a lot on my dear friend Tanya to help me um, because it's not the one that I, I, I connect with. I'm, can you tell I'm a Gemini? I totally just go off on my own oh, trail. No, it, it's okay. <laughs> I, I'm an ADHD Scorpio, so I follow. <laughs> Ooh, fun. Oh, my God. All, all of, like, my best friends are Scorpios. Yay! <laughs> awesome. it, it was meant to be. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so so um, that's a really exciting project. I'm also going to be presenting at the Strange Realities Conference, um, and that's in Nashville, Tennessee. That's in October and while you can come in person, there's also a virtual aspect of it too. So you can, you know, uh, sign in and, and watch all of the, the um, presentations, um, uh, you know, virtually. And then in terms of projects, I'm really excited that I have a tarot book that I'm working on next. So that's like the big exciting Yay. announcement. Like I'm, I'm working on a tarot book um, because I just, I love tarot. I'm so devoted to it. That, you know, the divination book felt like this really beautiful, like fun overview. And now I'm just going to like dive into, you know, um, into tarot and just um, hopefully I can help people and, and, and help support people in their adventures working with tarot and developing a relationship with with their own tarot deck. So. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so excited yes. for that. I can't wait. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I loved this book. And I was going to actually ask, do you have like a sequel to this one coming up? Or are you just, uh, is this the the next, your tarot book basically going to be the next one that comes in line and just to, you know, expand on them in individual books? Oh, that's a great, oh, wow. I never thought of it that way. I know that the tarot is next, so that's a really good, uh, you know, adventure. Of course, tarot is a little bit more, um, you know, it's a very popular form of divination. Um, I, I don't know if I have a follow up in me for in for the, this one. Maybe, um, it, maybe I don't know yet. To be continued. <laughs> to be continued. There you go. Uh, well, you heard it here first. That you know, there there might be, or it might come in different forms, which will be very awesome, regardless. Uh, I one hundred percent recommend Kiki's book. If you guys haven't already bought a copy, head to your local bookstore, go buy a copy. I promise you, you won't regret it. Especially if you're interested in divination. Even if you're not interested in divination and you just want to learn about it, so that you can have that in your knowledge lexicon then by all means go buy a copy because it's wonderful it literally sits on my desk and I reference it pretty much on the daily it is a spectacular work so thank, thank you so much you. for writing that Kiki <laughs> oh thank you so much for ha for having such kind words and I'm so glad that it's been beneficial for your practices um yeah that means a lot to me it was it was a lot of fun to 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 write and I'm just so happy that that, that you enjoy it. And, and hopefully there are other readers out there that are really, you know, getting something from it as well. Yes, indeed. Now, obviously I've told people to go follow you. Where can they follow you and find your work at? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So um, the book is called A Curious Future and you could get it at any major retailers. And um, I, I think that local shops can can easily order it as well. So just go on in and, and ask them if, if they can help out. Um, and, and I'm sure they'll be, be happy to support in that. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm most active on Twitter. And by most active, I mean, that's where I pop in and say hello the most. <laughs> um, so my Twitter name is Kiki, K-I-K-I-D. So like my last name, Dombrowski, Kiki D333. Um, but you can also find me on my website, kikidombrowski.com. Um, and, and, and feel free to send me messages or follow me on a, that. That website will also take you to my Instagram and Facebook. And I think even my Pinterest is linked up there too. <laughs> all those links will be in the show notes. So if you have issues spelling names and all that, because Kiki does have one of those names that it takes you a minute to go, did I spell that right? Yeah, I will include everything correctly in the show notes for everybody so it's an easy find for everyone. Plus, there will be a blog post where you guys can go over to revelatornetwork.com and you will find the links there as well. 
Kiki, thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been an absolute joy to have you. You are welcome to come back anytime. And I hope that you will, because we would love to have you back for anything you want to chat with us about. Thank you so much. I would love to. Like, it's just been such a treat, treat talking to you. And, and thank you so much for having me. And, and, and I can't wait to talk again soon. All righty, guys. You heard it here first. Go buy Kiki's book. Enjoy this. I will see you guys next week for some more talk on divination. And you guys have a wonderful and safe, safe, safe. Please be safe, y'all. Safe week. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye, everybody.